Right. Okay, great. So we're on to life cycle costing with this question. And with life cycle costing, I'm sure you remember that the aim here is to consider all the costs that have gone into making this. Because ultimately, if you remember with life cycle costing, we're trying to get a price uh, to certify some kind of correct price. And in order to, I mean, at least we at least want to know what um, the, the, a fair price should be for the product. Because if we, if we, if we I say this cautiously, um, if we just consider what's going on in the particular year, we might go in too high with our pricing um, because we're failing to consider um, that, if you like, that the, the costs, that the cost probably will fall as we as we go on from year to year. So if the cost will fall as we go as we go on from year to year, um, it, it maybe is a, is a good idea that we should think of all the costs that have gone into making the product. Um, that's kind of the, the theory of life cycle costing, that it's important to think of the pricing, to think of the costs for the entire period, including pre-release, because all these costs are really important. Um, but again, of course, depending on your type of product, um, it's understandable that it's just so you at least you know what price what the average cost is, and then you can think, and then you might then decide based on your marketing strategy or your, <clears throat> to, or, or exactly on marketing strategy on whether or not you're going to market skimming or market penetration at least you're you're fully aware so let's you you're, again as usual just because of time I'm not gonna I'm gonna read the question but you would have read this already in detail so what you have here is a shoe manufacturer they've developed, they've developed a, a particular product um, so they've spent quite a bit of money it's called the built-in tracking device um, it has a life cycle of two years um, so a lot of money has gone into this thing and you can see here um, it says that they plan to use the life cycle costing method to work out the total production cost the total production cost and they tend to use the life cycle which is take literally taking everything from beginning so where are we going um and so it says that you've spent so far 5.6 developing so that's good i know we haven't done financial reporting but yes developing means that we can classify this and we can have that as part of the cost um whether or not we're capitalizing or not doesn't matter it's so that we we it is a cost that we can use, um, we should use, we must use in trying to work out what the um, full cost is. Um, here it says the time spent on this meant that the company missed out on an opportunity of earning 800,000. This is not a cost in itself. I mean, if we were making, if this question was about decision making, I can understand the use of this. So this question of opportunity cost is when we come to make decisions. We want to make, we're not making a decision here, we're just trying to work out what our costs are. We're just trying to work out what our costs are. So we completely ignore um, that eight hundred, um, that eight hundred thousand, um, it's not, it's not part of our um, analysis. It's purely a decision-making tool, right? And we, if you remember, we studied this when we were talking. Whether we talk about, it's just about decisions, really. It's about decisions. Um, so there we are. So that's that. And then it says that the company has applied. Um, again, just to highlight, you wouldn't put this eight hundred thousand pounds on your expense sheet. You just wouldn't, right? You wouldn't. If you were actually preparing your accounts, it's relevant. The company has applied for a grant. Um, it must be renewed every year, two hundred thousand. So that's a cost. It says the cost of the patent application was five hundred thousand. That's a cost, which included two, twenty thousand for the salary cost of shoes lawyer, who's a permanent employee and was responsible for preparing the application. I suspect, I suspect that he spent time. But what really happened here was that the lawyer spent time on the application, and that that was twenty thousand for the salary costs at the time. This is not his full salary, but the time he spent on that job is worth twenty thousand, and that's fine. That's perfectly normal. If you if you didn't get your lawyer to do it, you'd have gone someone else to do it, and you'd have still paid them twenty thousand. So perfectly normal cost to include. You wouldn't include the rest of his salary on other jobs. But that is fine. Then they give us some more costs. They tell us that you're going to be making two hundred and eighty thousand. Um, units in the first year, those are the co labor costs, material costs, then they tell us that you're going to, um, you have the material costs here as well, then you have these fixed overheads, then you have this selling of distribution, so let's let's bang it all out really, it's making sure we get everything um, in in there. Let me just quickly open up a, I mean I think it's better to do it on a, on a, on a, on a spreadsheet or, or something, or just get it done. Um, yeah, why not? Let me do it on a spreadsheet. That's one way of, of doing it. Um, 
So what am I saying here? So you, you have the question, I'm sure you can see it. So I'll start off with, let's just get all the costs down. So in terms of all my costs, first of all, I have that development cost. And that development cost was five point <coughs> excuse me apologies there five point six million there we have that that was development cost right let's go back um, then we have the we're told we have the patent the patent I'm just adding this up very quickly the patent comes to the patent included the five hundred thousand or well, the patent was the five hundred thousand and we have that there. Then it tells us we have to renew the patent for two years. Patent renewal. And that's, if you like, 200,000 times two. And that's 400,000. And then let's talk about the materials. So going back very quickly, let me just have a look at that. You can see here that you have basically, you have materials you have see, I'm just going to add these two together 16 plus 8 is 24 yes that's 24 so I'm going to multiply the 24 by the 280 doesn't really matter how you um, do it I'll just do that first because 24 times 280 yes because I think you made yes you made 280,000 so that's year one year one and then in year two you have made 21 times 420 right and then what do we now have then we now have the fixed selling cost 3.8 and 3.8 and 1.5 Yeah, let me see. Fixed production and selling. Okay. So let's see what else. And I think that's us covered. <clears throat> I think this was covered. Let's add all that together. Yes, and we have a total cost of um, twenty-seven, twenty-seven, um, three, four, zero. Yes, um, I, I believe I've covered everything. Just to make sure. Um, yes. So we have revenue, and let's see our revenue given to us. I'm just, just making sure I've covered everything. Revenue is given to us at 34,300. And therefore, our profit, which is what this question is asking us for, is therefore this, this which gives us 6.96 million. And that's the answer for the first one. A bit long-winded, but that's um, life cycle costing for you. Um, so I think yes, I think what maybe might have tripped you, but I hope not, is this question of the of the opportunity cost. If you go back on life cycle costing, when we did the questions, we never included any sort of opportunity costs. Uh, this is just a straight. Um, you might have thought of opportunity costs again. I highlight that when it comes to making decisions. Okay, great. Let's um, see what's going on here with the next question. So we have some information about expected values and then we'll, 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 we'll do that. Actually, I don't even think I just calculated, done this calculation just because. Let's look at the questions. So which two of the, about the following is, which is correct about life cycle costing? Um, life cycle costing should not be used um, 
because the material costs differ between the two years. No, we're trying to include all the years, all the costs. Life cycle should not be used because the life cycle is short and development costs are too high. No, in fact, it's probably one of the reasons what we want to do is we want to make sure we include all the costs when, when it comes to certs, um, 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 choosing at the right price. So we definitely want to be using, um, make sure we have all the costs involved. Um, and life cycle costing should be used because it will provide the true financial cost, and that's so true. And a high price should be charged from the start as the product will be unique. This is what I was saying earlier on about marketing strategies. Um, you probably want to do that given that you've spent so much time and money on this. And it's only a two-year cycle anyway. So pretty much this is almost like one year. I mean, as much as it feels like two years, you can just call it one big long year. Um, two years is not really, I wouldn't call it two years really. So the answer is three and four. This, 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 these last two are the good ones. Um, are your reasons? Um, we've calculated no, um, question two. So the answer here was six point. The answer here was six point nine six million. That's what's going on with number two. Um, number three. Further research. Right. Um, for so. This, then there's this about environmental management accounting. So please go away and revise it. I have some, I have, I think I talk about it. I have a, a class on it. There's a video on it. Um, f but let's quickly talk about um, what's going on over here. Um, further research has shown that there will be environmental costs at the end of the production of the 250 um, process. So, and it says shoe companies considering how to cost, how to account for these, how to account for these, um, how to account for these costs. So let's quickly, yeah, let's discuss this really quickly. I was just looking for, yes, that's the other one. I wanted to get the other method, really important. So there are cost savings. Cost savings in the environmental costs are easily identified. This is just not true. They find it so difficult. That's why we have a different, we need to almost create almost like a new environmental management type of process. Environmental management costs consider financial costs only. That's not true. Um, we're thinking about the environment. We're thinking almost triple bottom approach. We're thinking about everything in general, not just financial. And ABC, so this is one method. Um, ABC can be used to analyze activity base. If we can find what activities within the organization and break it up, if you like, into what parts of the organization are emitting and we're seeing wastage because what goes in should come out is what we're trying to say anytime we have a loss or wastage that's going into the environment and that's a loss that we need to think about so um the third one is correct and flow costing if you if you go back and look at ema all you need to just do is just look at it and just be aware of the methods so the flow costing method is one method i can i think what i'll do is i will um yeah i mean i'll just when I'll just write these down here just so that you can remember these at least the flow costing method definitely is one is one method the other um, method if you like just to write them down so in case you see them again early is the input output method so this is pretty much looking at just what's gone in and what's gone out the flow method is slightly the more celebrated one this the flow costing method you might sometimes see questions like this that breaks up EMA into materials it breaks up um, what goes in material flows into three categories materials systems and deliveries and disposal so it's saying that you have these three different processes so you you'd have one you'd have there it'll go in you have materials and um and systems and then something will, it'll come out and go into something else but then there'll be some wastage and that disposal sort of that wastage is what we, we if we can calculate the weight at each point we can sort of see what's been wasted so to speak and if we're keeping measurements at all of these areas at all these junctions um, we'll be able to know what's going on so we have flow which is this material systems and delivery and disposal we have input output which is simply what goes in what comes out then we have activity based costing which tries to kind of focus on the cost sensors and see what's happening at each of those activities and then um, we also have life cycle costing, which includes all the costs, if you like, and, and factors all of that in to the, to the process. So those are your four methods of EMA, ultimately. Okay, great. Um, I'm trying not to give, so these videos are not too long. Um, that, so that's that one. Um, let's now 
go back and finish off the question. And then the next question asks you, um, what is the, so this is asking you to calculate expected expected values here. So let's just go back and see the actual um, material. Now expected values are pretty pretty straight if you if you can go back to them again. Expected values are the average, are an average. Now I'm also going to answer um, question four and five um, at the same almost at the same time. I mean expected values are about try, are about trying to maximize your return. What you go in there and you, it almost expected values about saying listen I'm going to find out what the expected value of something is so I know whether or not to actually go into this. I'm a risk neutral person. This is going to give me the highest return um, or, or, or tell me whether or not I should go into this. So I don't know what the risk is. There's very little I can do but what I'm going to do is then um, at least uh, this is my best return given the if you like whatever the risk there is. So I, I've sort of found an average risk and now I know what the return is. So then I'll make a decision. So expected values um, decision tools are for risk neutral um, decision makers. Um, but at least what you've done is to kind of choose if you like, um, because there's nothing you can do about the risk. What you've done is just to find the average risk. It's just an average. Expected values and average risk given the probabilities um, in-house. So um, again, you're not minimizing risk. All you're doing is finding an average of that risk. That's not minimizing it. That's just finding an average. Um, and therefore, we're now kind of, if you like, because you have several risk profiles and you're finding an average of all those risk profiles and then you're seeing what's the best scenario for me to do given the average of all these risks anyway let's find the expected value first so the expected value literally is finding the average and to find the average we literally multiply the probability times the expected cost so multiply 2.2 .2 times 0 0.2, 2.6 times 0 0.5, 2.9 times 0 0.3 get your answer do the same thing for year two and add the two together because that's the if you like the expected um, overall expected value of all these risks so let's let's sort of very quickly I mean very quickly just do this I mean 2.2 .2 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.44 half of 2.6 is 1.3 and 0 0.3 times 2.9 is 0 0.87 so what you now have is 2.44. So you now have here 2.61. That's what's going on over here in year one. And then in year two, what you now have is 1.8 times 0 0.3, which is 0 0.54. 2.1 times 0 0.4 is 0 0.84. And 2.3 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.69. So add all these together. 0 0.84 plus 0 0.54 is 2.07. So add these two things together and you will get 2.61 and you get 4.68. 4.68. So your that it becomes your that is your that is your expected um that is your expected cost, if you like, over the over the period. So let's just quickly answer that and go. I think I've taken too long on this question. That's just too. That's not even good. Um, do, 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 moving very quickly. Um, where are we? But it's important that I hope you. Well, I'm sure you've watched this and you're there. So there we are. So we have that. Um, Yes, so you can see that's your answer there, 4.68. So which of the following statements is true if the decision is made using expected values? And again, like I said, there's very little you can do about the risk. You cannot, you, 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 the risk is there, so you, can just, you can just kind of find an average. We're not minimizing it. So A and B are, are out of the way. 
and it's really the fact here the return is maximized if this is your best choice you now you can you can compare the return to what the expected risk is um, irrespective of the level of risk because what we've done is we've found an average of that risk if you like so it's not that we were given a level of risk we were given several levels of risk and we can't quite determine that level of risk we just found an average so the answer there is d five is d okay great stuff a slightly tricky one but uh, but you can again by practicing these questions you see the type of questions that they can ask right okay and that preps you for similar looking questions right um that's the end of that question two four three see you in two four four